Hello and welcome to Dread Life Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, podcast of two dinosaurs talking about uh, death, Romania, and also books. It's T Rex and Raptor coming all the way from Germany and Australia to you to talk about today's book, um, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, which is the first one in the All Souls trilogy. book in a bookshop. The classic way. Yeah, the classic way. It's called to me from its very, actually not particularly standout cover, but uh, <laughs> I'm really glad I picked it up. I now have all of them. <laughs> I mean, it's quite befitting the story, isn't it? Like the book calling to you from the library. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That fits the plot really well. <laughs> I think I saw the trailer for the TV show before it came out. And somewhere in the trailer they mentioned that it was based on a book, and that's, I think, when I read the book. And then I watched the TV show, and both were actually really great. I have had this... I'm not going to say since it came out. I mean, it came out in 2011. Yeah, it did. I read these well before the TV show came out. I'm so cool. I did it before it was cool. That's fine. You'll get a, you'll get a very sarcastic applause. I am amazing. I don't know to what you're referring. Sarcasm. Never heard of it. Well, I'm glad that we've both found this book on our own and we don't just recommend each other the same books. We have our, we have a similar taste. And this time it's even a good one. <laughs> what, you, Compared you're to us reading... Academy? <laughs> yes, or just generally us reading trashy teen novels. Look, I've basically moved on. I only read the ones you force me to. Sure, sure, just blame me. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll find only the highest of highbrow fiction in my bookshelves these days. Yeah, because you're hiding the other ones under the bed. Lies. No book is hidden under the bed. There's not even double ups. They're just it's on what the shelf. She said up. while she was pushing things suspiciously <laughs> under it. No, just the the books have been um, reallocated to the younger siblings. <laughs> yeah, take it, take it, and can't be seen as with me. So yeah. shall I read the blurb then? <laughs> yeah, sure, you go ahead. It begins with absence and desire. It begins with blood and fear. It begins with the discovery of witches. A world of witches, demons, vampires. A manuscript which holds the secrets to their past and the key to their future. Diana and Matthew, the forbidden love at the heart of it all. That is literally it for the blurb. Yeah. Also, it it sounds the blurb sounds less good than the actual story is. Like it, it's understood. Well, the, the thing is too that it's like all these comparisons to Twilight, and I <laughs> think that that hugely detracts from the rich tapestry of this story. Yeah. And the fact that she is a really good author <laughs> she's so, just a good writer <laughs> uh, so we should probably write a new blurb for them and send it in i don't know just trying to get on that twilight bandwagon it's really yeah, unfortunate maybe i'm not gonna say i didn't read twilight because i did read twilight i read yeah. a lot of twilight yeah same same here i did i did actually when the, the first fucking movie came out, I did watch that in cinemas. And yeah, me too. Afterwards, I read the books, which was cringy mm. and painful, even back then. Uh, see, I think you jumped on the bandwagon too late. I read the books when I was in year nine, which was peak appropriate age, which is when... <laughs> you're slightly younger than the characters and you empathize so hard like with all of that and the writing style is written for year nine girls and she nails it when that's your demographic you go back and read it now it's it's no just don't do it it's it's hard work you feel uncomfortable it's painful, it's painful. You're like he's a hundred she he she's like 16 yeah, really isn't even legal really? for fuck's sake there's that, but also, like, if you've been around for a hundred years, 
you're going to have to work really hard to justify why the 16-year-old is interesting to you. Not that that also isn't a problem in this book, where he's, like, <laughs> thousands of years old, and she's, like, 30, 33? She has a 33rd birthday, well, I think. Generally, the these type of books go with the cop-out of, ooh, you're an old soul. But technically, the guy should have a mindset in comparison of a 70-year-old grumpy man, like... Yeah, well, uh, I guess it's it's less bad now because, like, when she's 32, she has this whole, like, life's worth of experience, like, talk about and back her up. And she's a professor. She's quite accomplished. Like, she did a bunch of things before she, like, shacked up with a vampire. <laughs> anyway, that criticism aside, I very much enjoyed this book, which, I don't know, I always enjoy books. That's a lie. There are some that I truly hate. But... This one was extra nice because I just finished reading Across the Universe and then I got to start reading this and it is miles apart. They're not in the same Sophia. The These books, yeah, not comparable. Yeah, I don't know. How did you feel about it? Um, I actually really liked it too. I mean, I, I did... Hold on. Did I finish it before the first episode of the TV show came out? I'm not sure. But I've definitely had like the images of the actress in my head while reading it from the trailer alone mm. and already knowing a bit about it before actually getting into it I don't know if I would have found it on my own otherwise necessarily because I don't think it ever was really big over here um still mm. isn't because I don't even know that the tv show actually was on any public tv channel maybe it wasn't aired here either. I managed to find it when I was on a plane and the plane <laughs> options like TV shows I was going through the BBC option and I found this and then I found out we have to wait two years because now the Americans are on board and they pumped more money in. So, yeah. yeah. Also, Corona is making everything fucking sick. Oh, yeah. That too. But I was mad about it before. This aired in 2018. Like, yeah. Oof. <sighs> But, yeah, no, I really liked it. I mean, in terms of rating, I would probably go with the 4 out of 5. Yeah, i I give it a 4 out of 5 as well. It's, when it boils down to it, though, it's the story of two introverts falling in love. (laughs) And it's a romance book. We've got multiple points of view of the same story from two characters. And it's, like, it's two, it's... All the fun drama aside, it's the story of two introverted professors of history and other nerdy things falling in love in Oxford. And yes, with the whole underlying the the underlying um, thing of "Mm, it's a forbidden love. Yeah, I don't know what he might have to go there at any point. You know. (laughs) Yes, it's the general. He must be a vampire. She isn't it. Mmm, she's tasty. I mean, I'm just... From my understanding of romance books, and specifically vampire-based romance books, that's just how every guy ever feels, right? (laughs) Mm, Yes. She must be tasty. I'm I'm waiting for the book that it's a vampire woman and just a human guy, and she just shows Mm. up and is like, oh my god, you smell disgusting. And he's like, yeah, I used to have a coke (laughs) head of it. And then she's like, oh, God, I never want to drink you. And then we get the cliche scene that you have in every vampire book where she is going to be dying. Only his blood can save her. She's like, but I don't want to drink it. It's so disgusting. (laughs) I want to see the same film, but I don't want him to be gross. I want to have exactly the same dialogue, but, like, switched. Where, like, oh, no. Ah, oh, sex and feeding is all interlinked, uh, and you know, there's no way it could ever be the same. Yeah, <clears throat> it's okay. We'll 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 send uh, Warner Brothers an idea. Yeah, I can't write for shit. Here, let me put this script idea to you. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, honestly, they filmed shit like Fifty Shades of Grey. So I'm pretty sure whatever we do, it can't be that bad. It was a really popular book. Yes, but it was still a really shitty book. So I don't think we have to be under that much pressure for quality. I don't think you understand how many books teenage girls buy and their mothers. 
I mean, I've seen the I've seen the scenes from from the premieres with all the women of the fitting demographic screeching like little girls. So yeah, no, I, I can see that. I'm not gonna lie, my friends went and saw every single one of those movies together at the girls' day at the cinema. <clears throat> my mom read all of the books like multiple times. It's okay, strange. look, I got to the contract part in Fifty Shades of Grey and just couldn't handle it. Because, like, that was such a poorly worded contract. I mean, Moving promptly along, though, back to the book we're yes. actually discussing. No no more tangents. <laughs> God, we're so sidetracked today. Okay. Yeah. So, Romance. yes. We, um, shall we go into the spoilery? Yeah. Do oh. a spoilers thing to help transition us through to the next bit. <laughs> spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> We're not going to get sued for that, right? Um, okay, so um, we begin the book with Diana, our main female protagonist. Um, and I think it starts with her being in the library, actually, doing her, doing her research work, trying to prepare for some kind of speech she needs to do. Yeah, so six weeks from the, st- the opening of the book, she's going to give a conference presentation on basically the work she's done at Oxford because she's there based kind of on sabbatical I'm not 100% sure what the proper term is they mention it but I've forgotten so she's there for a year do basically doing research so she doesn't have any she has some classes she's doing like a guest teaching spot but she's at Oxford for a year to do a research project and then she'll go back to her home university which is Yale or her working position at Yale I think so yeah and she she's studying um alchemical images right yeah she she's looking into the history of alchemy yeah when so... humans gave up magic for science <gasps> yeah, I know I, there was a lot of um gesticulating there uh, not that anybody can see, but I did a lot of gestures. It's okay. I, I can see it in my mind's eye. Yeah. yeah. So, so she's she's calling up a couple of books to, to research, and one of them is a mysterious manuscript that apparently is bewitched, which is also when we find out that she is a witch. Ashmole 782. <laughs> Super not exciting title, I thought when reading it, but okay. Uh, well, the, so that refers to the collector, right? Yeah. What the university has his entire collection that's basically been, I don't know, donated at some point, and they're keeping it in their archive, and it's just book. Yeah. 782. 782. <laughs> 394. <laughs> Okay, we got the number down. Excellent. Well, I mean, um, that's, that's the page on werewolves in Harry Potter in the third one. But um, I do know. Oh, do you know? All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so she gets the book. It's bewitched. And she, without really, I think, meaning to or knowing how she's doing it, she's, like, lifting the enchantment and opens the book. Yeah, I, well, I think predominantly the enchantment is that Nobody can re- recall the book from the stacks. Yeah. Like, you just can't it's, find it. It's officially um, been missing for, I think, like, a hundred years or something. Yeah. So she gets the book, sits down to read it. It's all tingly. She's like, mm, this is magic. And we go, ooh, how does she know that it's magic? And then we get some side story about she does, she's a witch who doesn't use her magic because she doesn't like magic. Because um, tragic backstory. Because tragic backstory. But, I mean... That and the fact that she doesn't seem to have control of it. She doesn't seem to be able to do magic in the classical sense. And by classical, I mean the as per the book's own law sense of magic. She has some kind of abstract magic that she can't quite get a handle on. And it, that plus tragic backstory means that she just doesn't want that kind of lack of control. I think yeah. she, she Although to yeah. be fair, I think we find out later on in the book that she's that she's using like small bits of her magic without knowing it all the time. Yeah. 
the, so it's kind of like, oh no, I've worked for everything myself. I didn't use magic to get my way uh, up into the world. And then it's like, uh, mm, you might have a little bit like all the time. <laughs> yeah, which kind of sucks. And I feel like it will probably will make her feel like she hasn't quite earned the the acclaim that she's got. But either way, yeah, studying I- history is pretty intense. Yeah, and I mean, if you are somebody with special powers, I'm pretty sure that most people would use them. So I don't think there's inherently much yeah. shame in that. Yeah. Anyway, she discovers this magical book. Once she discovers it, it's magical, and it discovers she's magical, she's like, mm, no, <laughs> and puts it back. Yes, because super idea. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of where the drama starts. So when the library takes the book back... Um, it makes a kind of magical popping noise, and <laughs> yeah. everybody finds out. Everybody it's super strange. It's like, ooh, somebody put the book back. It was a great magical spell. Well, I think she's talk. She so she ends up talking to one of the witches about the book that she's got that she got out and put back. Which yeah. turns out everybody was like, ooh, what was that weird? magic popping noise um, and she's like no idea just happened to do this thing as a sidebar Gillian and Gillian's like oh shit and then all the witches know and because the witches are not very subtle everybody else knows because the vampires can hear you they've got super good hearing the demons are always just kind of there and everybody seems to be ignoring them so they don't realize that they're walking past the demons and the demons are like cool thanks for that tidbit um, yeah, the demons are kind of like the underdogs that everybody ignores because yeah. they tend to be crazy and kind of unhinged and they're just lying in the background waiting. They don't necessarily, they're not unhinged in a bad way either. They're on that kind of yeah. genius madness point. Yeah, they go a little bit insane, but uh, not because they're evil or bad or want to harm anybody. They're just... Uh, no, and I think it's also said that like, over the last, I don't know, years, centuries, whatever, that it's gotten worse with the whole slightly going unhinged part. Yeah, more madness, less genius. Yeah, which is definitely not the direction you want to go. Not even close. Yeah, so I think after that we, um, I don't know if Diana was walking around town, but she was out and about and kind of realized that she was being watched by a vampire. And I like the whole... Uh, I like no, the dis- no, it first happens in the library. Yeah? Yeah, because... So, okay. So, Diana's doing her count of how many times she uses magic in a year, and she can't find a ladder, right, <laughs> in the library. Yeah. And she's like, there's nobody here, there's nobody watching me, I'm going to just judge it a little bit, and it's going to fall off the shelf into my hands. <laughs> and as soon as the book, like, hits her hands, we see, we start to feel the vampire eyes on her back. And she's like, two cold dead spots are looking in my back. What the fuck is I, going on? I do really like the description of, of what it feels like for witches when different creatures look at them. I think that was a really nice little tidbit. Yeah, so it, I can't remember what other witches look like. Demons look like... Demons, when they're looking at you, it feels like they're, kiss, they're kisses. They're just kissing your skin. And when... Vampires look at you, it's like ice. Two little yeah. icy dots. I'm not sure anymore, but I think it might have been like a warmish feeling for the witches, but I'm not sure anymore. But, um, yes. So we get the big meeting. Then we get a bunch of scenes of Matthew and Diana falling in love introvert style. <laughs> yes, um, like going to a cafe or doing yoga together. Yeah. Which I found it so fucking hilarious when, like, the the old mysterious vampire guy comes in with, do you want to go to yoga with me? Yeah. It was great. Pretty cool yoga class. Uh, having le- started doing yoga recently myself, it's nice being like, oh, I know what these poses are now. <laughs> what these words mean. Yeah, yeah, I had um, no idea, but I also glossed it over, so. So, Diana and Matthew have a couple little dates. They're being real cute. And then Diana starts getting threatened. 
like <laughs> hardcore. Yes, and we also have um, Matthew going on a trip to Scotland, I think, to talk to his demon friend. Oh Hamish, yeah. Hamish, who is like and a Hamish great character. Like, oh, Hamish is great, and also the fact that Hamish is like, oh shit, he's in love, <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> yeah, Hamish going. Mm, I know how the last times ended. Yeah. Not great. Not great. Um, no, none of yeah. his girlfriends ever survived him. Which I mean, sure, he's like in yeah, the human. And he's, yeah. Yeah. And then Diana gets threatened. He comes back to Oxford because the brown witch has been banging around in her head, um, <laughs> which like just he's just trying to dig for information, and she's got mind shields, and he keeps ramming into them. Then... Yeah, and I think then Matthew um, tells her that he's, like, in his lab, he's looking into into all three um, races or whatever of creatures and is trying to find out why they are yeah, seemingly he's dying to find, out. And to some extent trying to find the mitochondrial Eve, but of each species. So he's yes. trying to find the shared common mother for all. Either all the species, or at least all the ones for the witch, and all the ones for um, vampires, and all the ones for the demons. Yeah. And that's also, um, I think, when he talks about that, he and also the witches think that Ashmole 782 probably has the answer to that question. Where did the creatures come from? And... I Can you unmake also, the creatures? Yeah, and I think it's also there that he makes the comment that the witches, or that a lot of the witches think that they created vampires. Yeah. Because witches think they create everything. They're so great. Yeah, the witches are pretty up themselves. The vampires yeah. are snooty, but the witches are pretty up themselves. Yeah, so I think part of the fear is also for the vampires that maybe the witches could be able to like, yeah, undo them again, if that were true. Yeah. So she gets her blood taken at that point, and they're going to run. She's like, cool, I believe in your cause. Hands over some blood. <laughs> Matt does, Matthew does a really weird territorial thing with his son, who we've ma- just met, who's Marcus. Yeah, although I think it's Marcus. to say that it's his vampire son. Yeah, so not like his not, real birth son. Yeah, not related, just... Forced relation, basically. Chosen relation. Well, I mean, he asked Matthew's permission. Yeah. I mean, not Matthew. Marcus's permission when he made him. He didn't... Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So... Um, I think we also then get a phone call with Diana's, like, aunt and her aunt's wife or partner. I'm not sure. Part, long-term partner. Yeah. This is pretty marriage equality. Yeah. So, and they're having a chat about, like, mm, the witch books, and mm, I'm into this vampire, and they're, they're all, ooh, vampire, nice. But not even a little bit. <laughs> they're like, stay away from him, don't do anything stupid, like, vampires are dangerous, don't get caught up in this. Too late, introverts are falling in love. Yes. I mean, it's the whole theme of the book, the dramatic, mm, two different species, and they shouldn't be together, and... All that forbidden yeah. love type. Except that, like, t- two thirds of the way, th- well, not two thirds, at least a third of the way through the book, it's not really a drama. It's like, we shouldn't do this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Like, we're really cute. We don't realize that we're falling in love. And then they're like, we're just being friends. And then, no, no, they're not. <laughs> um, everybody else around them's like, you guys gotta be really more, far more careful. You guys gotta stop hanging out. And they're like, no, 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 no. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> I can't uh, hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah. No, I just, I didn't take her out on a date. She was hungry. We happened to go for lunch. It's <laughs> breakfast. It's fine. It's a couple yeah, days Yeah, and then we row. did it but... seven times more because coincidence. Yeah. Coincidence. Anyway, so they are kind of really cute in that way. I think they're a bit adorable. And then we have, um, I think it's after that, that we have Jillian, one of the, one of her witch friends, um, tells her that, here we come into the dramatic backstory, that Diana's parents who were killed weren't actually killed by humans because they were found out to be witches, but they were killed by other witches because they didn't 
conform they kept or didn't. Secret. Yeah. They kept secrets like Diana's doing. She's not telling anybody what's going on. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, she doesn't want to hang out with witches because they're snooty. Yeah, so that happens a lot. Gillian is not subtle in her threats, whereas Peter Knox is a little bit more subtle. He's at least not saying any of the bad words out loud. He's projecting <laughs> them into her head. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's fairly high up in the hierarchy as well, I think. Yeah, he's on the council. We get to learn about the council. <laughs> Yes, that's true. So we have council things, which is really cool, and then we learn about, you know, more bad things, and everybody's discussing about, you know, oh, everybody's staring at Matthew, and Matthew's like, everybody's staring at Diana, and you're like, (laughs) well, she's glowing, and you are death incarnate. So, (laughs) yeah, they probably are staring. Yes, Diana glows when she's doing magic or when she's happy, so... She's yeah, uh, not passing the human anymore. Which is like, you can't go outside anymore now if you're happy. You have to be gloomy, otherwise people will notice. Yeah. So the witches notice that she's getting real buddy-buddy with Matthew. And I think that's when the two of them do like a small trip out to one of Matthew's old estates or whatever. And you um, get a bit of backstory about Matthew, about like his sister and his mom and his dad. Yeah, because her, her portrait is in his house, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so he lives in the lodge, the old lodge. <laughs> the um, old, old lodge. Yeah. So we get a little bit of information about him, and he, he just seems to have like, very bachelor taste. He's like, he's he's lots of, lots of dark woods, lots of leather, that's his style, but also it's been collected over 1,500 years. And so, yeah. you know, there's Edwardian pieces and Victorian pieces in a house that he built during Henry the 15th. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like, I like the, all the little historian pieces that they put in there. Yeah. Well, so Deborah Harkness is a, she's a history professor. Yeah. I mean, it does show in the book. Yeah. I think. But it's um no I really like write it. Write what you know though. What? You just you gotta write what you know. Yeah. And I do like that that joke about the fall of Carthage. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you see the fall of Carthage? Which one? Which one? <laughs> yes. It's pretty good. Yeah, so we get a bit more backstory there and a bit more like them sharing their I don't know, tragic backstories, basically, because his sister was killed and his dad was killed, and it's all very sad. I can't remember what is it that triggers her first magical outburst. I think the first one might have been in the library, when Peter Knox kind of... No, she um, has a, she has a sparking issue at home, doesn't she? That might have, well, that might have been when she gets the photos of her dead parents. Or was that the last one? Um, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure she has a sparking issue first, and then she's she has one on her own, and then she goes to the library and she has to, like double check that she doesn't bring any flames into the into the library. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure on the on the order there, honestly. Mm-hmm. But essentially, her powers are, or her grasp on her powers is slipping. And yeah. she's also showing, like, special kind of magic that nobody else can do or should be able to do. Yeah, or, like, rumoured to be long forgotten. Yeah. But she has, she, okay, so she doesn't really start showing that, though, not post-puberty. Like, she was doing some weird shit post-puberty. She hasn't done that for a while. There's some triggering incident. She gets all lightning fingers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't... I'm not a big fan of the the naming for some of the stuff, like the witch wind, it just yeah. it sounds stupid, honestly. I think that's more of a historical callback to what, like, were rumoured to have happened in ye olde times. Yeah, but they still could have gone with a cooler title. Just saying. Yeah, but the guy is a 1,500-year-old vampire. He can use whatever old words he wants. Yes, you can, but the writer could have made a different decision. Then that wouldn't be true to the character. 
Uh, I don't know. She writes the fucking character. She can decide what's true. I am fine with it. You're lame. Um, so I think um, I think somewhere in between the the happenings of a magical outburst, we have like a cheesy romantic dinner at his place or her place. I think we have her place. She makes dinner. Winning. Yeah, she makes dinner for him. She has to go and contact the local zoo to find out what grey wolves eat because that will probably be the closest in food that she can give to him than that he can actually eat. Like um, um, I can't remember what made her think that grey wolves is the thing to go. Because that he wrote a bunch of papers on grey wolves. He oh. his oh, initial right. awards yeah. for the university are all from his original papers on grey wolves before he started going into genotyping. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so they have, like, a cute little dinner, and I think they make out. No, well, she kisses him on the cheek, and then uh, he kisses her on the mouth on the stairs. Yeah. Well, for them, there's, like, a lot. Because they're two introverts falling in love. Oh, it's adorable, yes. It's a lot of affection for two introverts. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. It's amazing. Anyway, he promptly follows that up with, well, I guess I'll have to make dinner for you tomorrow night. And he does. <laughs> uh, he orders fancy food from a local restaurant, I think. And he takes her into the wine cellar, right? And makes her try yeah. a bunch of different types of wine. Well, if like, you're a vinny culturist, this book is for you. <laughs> it's It has a lot of passages where it's basically just wine porn. I mean... Oh, so much wine porn. Mmm, palate cleansing, da 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 da, da soft and buttery, notes of, of strawberry. I wish I was this familiar with wine, but it just kind of tastes like wine. <laughs> yes, so if we would have written that book, it would have been like, mmm, wine. How about this one? Ooh, it's winey. Ooh. Wine. Well, one, I will probably never write because my English skills just aren't good enough. Um... And two, uh, I can't drink it, so... Yeah. Kind of. It'll be I mean, different types of rum <laughs> by history. It's, it's okay, we'll do a combination. Rum and wine, it'll be great. It'll be grape? <laughs> yes! Uh, well... Have uh, okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Long. Yes. Comes um, back from dinner, right? She yeah. gets the letter. Yes, she gets like a threatening, threatening letter from Peter Knox, which I think also has pictures from the crime scene in it from her dead parents. It is just the crime scene photo. So she's only seen the black and white newspaper photos. These yeah. are full color prints of the crime scene photos of her parents' death. Which also um, makes me ask. Which newspaper put the crime scene photos in? I mean, come on. It's Africa, man. They were, they were like, they were in a circle. Her parents are reaching for one another. One of them's been disemboweled, and they've the other one's basically been tortured. Yeah, um, so let's put a, a picture of that on the front page. Yeah. Sure, it's super attractive. You can find a lot of crime scene photos on the internet, though. Like, yeah, a lot. that would have not been the prime time for internet. No, it wouldn't. So, it's fucked up. Crime but... aficionados going centuries back. Yeah, I just wouldn't have thought in the public papers. But... Eh. Oh, well. Maybe it was a less public one. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. she gets the pictures and she has more or less a breakdown. Yeah, she goes all sparky, witchy. witchy. <laughs> Um, and she goes to, her hands are effectively on fire as far as she can tell, and she runs towards the sink, and Matthew goes, they smell electrical, don't put them <laughs> in the sink, and then we get a, like, snapshot of being like, well, that's why the house burnt down when I was 13, and you're like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, then she has another moment, her hands go out, and she starts suffocating herself with witch wind. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of that, lots of that going on, and Matthew's like, all right, I'm gonna, well, he starts trying, actually, he starts trying to organize to fly her to Africa, right? Um, To go and see her parents and find their bodies and do all that kind of thing, and she's like, no, they died when I was seven, and he's like, oh, oh, those, those people, oh, okay. 
Yeah. And then I think she's, once she manages to calm down, I think she's like super exhausted and just falls asleep. I know, he gives her a sedative, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. He knocks her full of medication. I forgot about that one. Yeah, well, no, he offers it to her. She agrees. She doesn't like it. I mean, as you um, would. Yeah, I'm not a fan of sedatives either. Then we have Matthew just decides that they're going to go. He's going to take her home. Basically, he can't protect her at Oxford. They're going yeah. to go. But then um, he also has a chat with Marcus. Yeah, so Marcus has the blood, blood results. results. Yeah. Yeah. So he brings over her blood results and Matthew's passport, right? Yeah, and it turns out that she has super special witchy blood. Yeah, she basically has genetic markers for every, or like a fair number of the powers that they've um, already kind of isolated, the genetically isolated. Um, yeah, and then fire like... witch in witch water. Um, <laughs> and I think we... most of them are things that has, haven't been observed in centuries, pretty much. Yeah, and particularly not in combination. They haven't seen yeah. any markers in combination. So she is like this ancient witch throwback, which is why we're starting to suspect why she wasn't so good at classical magic. Because yeah. you know, she's, there's more... She's a drama bitch, and she only does the real special shit. Yeah, but also she does drama. Um, yeah. That aside. Yeah, I think that's also actually the first time that Matthew like reflects on the fact that he and Diana actually aren't supposed to be together. And that yeah, uh, that's an exactly. actual law that everybody agreed on that they should inter intermingle. Yeah, and I think Marcus is the one that's like, mm, you gonna tell her? And he's like, No, she doesn't need to know yet. Like, I right. Yeah, it's fine. Let's date for a while longer before I tell her that technically. No, 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 no. I'm kidnapping you and taking me to my, taking you to my mother's house. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll solve everything. Let's just live with my mom for a while. <laughs> well, that's the thing. She's like, no, I don't really want to go and hang out with your mom. I don't think that's a good idea. Like, like we can handle shit here. And then he's like, oh, I have this really ancient um, alchemy manuscript. <laughs> and she's like, all right, let's go. And then he's like, seriously? And she's like, yeah, I want to see it. And he's like, mm. and she's like, Wait, let's go. I'm packed. Let's go. I want to see this book. Yeah. So, yeah, she's she's nerdy enough that she decides to go to France just for a fucking book. It's great. It's priorities done right, basically. Yeah. Um, we all also get a, a, bit, a bit of a recap with her just eating a fuck ton. And they're like... <laughs> I don't know how many paranormal books you've read, but when they start eating a lot, you're like, mmm, something's a brewin. Yeah. you got to get fuel from somewhere, right? Anyway, so, I don't know. I'm always, like, on top of these kind of points, and you're like, I don't know if everybody does that on purpose or if it's genuinely, like, a thing. Do we all consider... I don't know. Is magic considered an a more of an academic exercise or a physical exercise? It's physical um, exercise, sure. It's an academic exercise. Uh, I don't know, but I mean, your brain burns a lot of calories too by working. So even if it were just a, you know, just a mental exercise, it should still increase her like need for. Not to the same extent. I, the difference, me studying versus me training, like the food intake, it's much more for the training side of it. Yeah, I mean, definitely more. But I don't know. It's. Usually for these kind of questions, somebody comes around the corner and goes like, well, it's magic. So, yeah, I don't know. Hey, anyway, we're off to France. Boop, boop. We get to France. We Ding. meet his mom, and his mom's like, he does not mm, like this her. is stupid. Why are you guys doing this? You're going to get killed. Well, I mean, less that and more like fucking witches. I hate <laughs> witches. Yeah, witches are the too. worst. Um, so we get a lot of that, and but we also get Martha, Martha. I don't Martha. know what's the French pronoun. Oh, Ma- Martha. I don't know. I I don't know. M A R T H E. Somebody let me know how I'm supposed to pronounce that when it's old French. 
Could they I have it's, no it's, okay. it's okay, we're going Superman on this, it's Martha. Oh. <laughs> but it was my mother's name. <laughs> um Yeah, so Martha, Martha is the housekeeper and she she's the, just She's also a vampire, hella, but she's like um, mm, I like people. Yeah. She's 60, she would have been turned at about 60 years old. She uh, she makes food, lights candles, banks fires. She kind of like knows her place. She's not the lady of the house, but she enjoys trashy novels. As it's made abundantly clear in the book, she is a romance novel fiend. And she loves the story that's playing out right in front of her at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean... If you're immortal at that age, and then you spend your entire immortal time cooking and cleaning after somebody else, you definitely need to find some joy in your life. I think she does it because she wants to. Yeah, um, I mean, she definitely she isn't forced into it, but it still doesn't sound like the most exciting thing you could do with your immortality. Um, like, I don't know what you would do, though. There's no great war, there's nothing going on. There's, there's no need for her to do anything else. Why not, like, run a house? She seems to enjoy cooking and gardening. She's got a pretty impressive garden. She gardens. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably just me who would get bored and tired of it after, like, ten years. I just kind of imagine, like, if I was immortal, I'd need things to keep to keep doing, right? If, like, academics wasn't the way to go, which seems to be the case for quite a few of them, like, you've got to go and hone your skills somewhere else. You've got to keep doing things, otherwise you just get bored, right? Yeah, I'd probably go more do- dramatic though than that. <laughs> of course you would. Yeah, it's it's fine, it's fine. You, you'll be the housekeeper for all eternity. And I'll just, I don't know, ah, jump off cliffs just... somewhere in South America. I feel like Martha wouldn't be stopped from doing that. She'd do yeah. that. But she, you got to come home eventually. Oh, uh, maybe. Or you could go into space. Um... You can go into space now. Are you successfully managing going into space? Well, I could not. Well, no, actually, I couldn't. I'm, like, way past the age. I would have had to already prep from an early age on. I really missed, missed the, I mean, the jumping ball. There, a lot of them so. are, are mid-30s. You just got to have a huge turnabout in career right now. Well, but it takes a really long time, first of all, to study all those things. And then become, well, you can, yes. no, there's a streamline if you go into the Navy, you become an, a pilot, and then you can get in. <laughs> oh, sure, that'll be easy, I'll just become a Navy pilot. Damn. You can do it, it's fine. You just gotta stop being an undertaker and killing people. Directly. <sighs> you can do it from the sky. <laughs> Think of it as a new skill. Killing people from the sky. Okay, I'll, I'll put it on the list, it's fine. <laughs> Cool. So they go to France. We meet these characters. It's great. Martha uh, likes Diana and Isabu. Yeah. It's no, not. No. And then no. Diana is super excited about the book she gets to read. Yeah. So she spends a lot of time doing that. It's all very exciting. We're horse riding. We're spending a lot of intimate time with Matthew. It's all very well and good. We're finding a copy of origin of species and find out that he's been writing letters with Darwin. Yeah. Just like every kind of big literary person ever Matthew has had written correspondence with over the years. So, yes. yes. It's very convenient that he knew everybody who would become very important. Well, I think he's just start like picking them, right? You got 1,500 years sense of, of picking them? watching. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, he just likes, he doesn't like idle conversation, so he's, he's, he surrounds himself with big thinkers. Yeah. yeah so More of a, a scholar, less of a warrior. Yeah. I mean, they do have a conversation about the whole, well, yeah, how he came to think that there must be a, a common ancestor or something like that, and how he and Darwin basically talked about that. Well, he, he thought there was a common ancestor during the, when Darwin was writing his book. Now he's yeah. not so sure. Well, it's all very complicated, so... Yeah. What comes next? Oh, um... We have a vampire from Diana? What? 
he leaves Diana and goes um, to... I think first we have a vampire from the congregation coming and being like, you guys need to stop this shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, what hold on, hold on. Domenico. Domenico, that's right. Um, so yes. Domenico, yeah, we get the warning from Domenico. He's like, mm, you two shouldn't be together. And then This isn't a warning for you, Matthew. I'm telling this bitch in the back about <laughs> the rules of the congregation. And she yeah. promptly calls home and is like, there are rules? You said nothing. She was like, and they're like, but you didn't want anything to do with magic. Why did you think, we, like, we didn't think we had to then, like, give you all the other rules. You didn't want to be here. Yeah, and then she's kind of pissed, understandably, because Matthew knew the whole time that this was against the law. Yeah. It didn't say shit. And then they dramatically go inside, and she's like, but I've fallen in love with you. And he's like, all cold and dead. Yeah, and then somebody broke into his lab, so he leaves. Yeah. (laughs) And he's like, but I love you. And he's like, I gotta go home, check on that invasion. No, okay. She, She says it on the phone first, doesn't she? Oh, I thought she said it right before he leave, and he was yeah. like really, he was like really cold, cold towards her and didn't say anything. It was just like I gotta go. You keep saying that. Yeah. Well, anyway, he leaves. She becomes water because she's yeah, crying. Yeah, she, she just leaks water out of every part of her. She's like, it started just... in my eyes and then it was coming out of my hair and my fingers <laughs> and I was, like, I just was the water. She's just yeah. super dramatic with crying. Like, really yeah. stage dramatic. It's Isabel and Martha have got their shit covered. They're like, put her in the bath, get her warm, <laughs> capture all of her water, start singing to her until she becomes normal again. Yeah. Like, all the comforting things you do for a little child, really. Although, I'm, I'm not sure if it was word for word like that, but I remember being, like, said that Jezebel sings, like, hauntingly for her. Um, she sings. She sings the same song she sung to Matthew during his like rages when he was a newborn vampire. Uh, I think she also tells her then, like how Matthew became a vampire and that he had a wife and a kid before and they died and all that yeah. said. Yeah, and we start getting a lot of flashes from. Her foresight, but also, like, past sight. I don't know what that is described as. And she gets, like, mixed messages from flashes of his past and Isabu's past and people that are around. Yeah. And um, then we also have Isabu take take her hunting with her. So she watches yeah. as she hunts. I think Isabu's idea was to, like, scare her off of vampires a bit more. And Diana is like, oh, this is good. I have to get used to this because I like Matthew. Yeah, she's super on board with it, but she's not kind of okay with them killing the deer. But... <laughs> uh, there was a weird, there was a weird flashback to, to Twilight for me. Like, mm, yeah, we can't kill the deer. It all needs to look like innocence. Yeah. But mm, yeah. Oh well, she she'll survive the hunting trip, and it's fine. Cool, and then we get, she calls Matthew, right? Yeah. Oh, she pokes around in his study, uh, finds out more about his children, touches things and gets that post-sight thing, um, finds out about all of his Knights Templar. Yeah, so Matthew yeah. runs the Knights Templar. That's kind of a big deal in this book, but yeah, more so like in, the, the, in the later books. Yeah, it's like the, the Lazarus something. Yeah, the Knights of the La- Knights of Lazarus. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then I think he comes back home and he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I love you too." He loves her on the phone first, right? Yes. That's the bit that matters. Yes, I've got the chapter open. Okay. I, I I don't know why, but I always keep suppressing that one. <laughs> yeah. You're not dreaming, Matthew said, and Diana. He hesitated. I love you. It was what I want. What I most wanted to hear, the forgotten chain inside me started to sing quietly in the dark. Come here and tell me that, I said softly, my eyes filling with tears of relief. (laughs) You haven't changed your mind? Never, I said fiercely. You'll be in danger. Your family too. Are you willing to take the risk for my sake? I've made my choice. We said goodbye and hung up. They were on the phone. 
Anyway. Okay. Dramatic then, romantic phone call. Dramatic romantic phone call. It makes sense in context, and I've clearly been like way OTT when reading that, but um, yeah. It's okay. We like you like that. Um. Yes. And then he finally comes home, and they're all like, "Yeah, we should get to her in real life." And then they kiss, and then Isabel Isabel's like, "Well, fuck, it's legit now." <laughs> Um, Damn it! Because I'm never gonna get rid of the witch. Yeah, they're now vampire married. They use the term mated, but Matthew's like, it's so gross, and I'm too Catholic. We're gonna get married. <laughs> anyway, cliche um, off. Damn it! I'm too religious for this. Yeah. Oh yeah, he carries that Catholic guilt something fierce. I feel that when I'm reading it. You're like, I haven't been to church in so long. Ah uh, man, I'm like really over-the-top atheist, so a lot of those parts I tend to gloss over just because I don't want to start rage-rambling. Yeah, uh, no, nah, look, as somebody who grew up fairly strict Catholic, it's a lot of it, it touches on stuff I already knew. Yeah. And and made sense to me as somebody who, who grew up in that world, and I can't imagine that you couldn't have grown up being, without being hyper-Catholic in his age not the catholic church that exists now that's for sure but some version of it yeah and probably not the better version of it i did ebbs and flows ebbs and flows anyway they're back they're happy she's prepping for her her presentation with this book yeah we also find out that um while he was in oxford he found out that somebody broke into diana's room trying to find Something. Big surprise, it's Peter Knox and Gillian again. <laughs> Who else? Our main protagonists. Antagonists. Anyway. Antagonists, yeah. Um, anyway, and then Gillian mysteriously disappears and is found propped up against uh, Peter Knox's door. Yeah, it definitely couldn't have been Matthew killing her and sending a message. No, no. no we're, not that we're going to tell Diana about it either. Of course not. Keeping secrets... To not look horrible yourself is very important in a relationship. Vampires keep lots of secrets. It's yes. this one of the things he has to overcome. It's part of his character growth is like being more truthful and like sharing his burdens. He's not I the like, only badass in the picture. I like how he, I like how the dramatic part of the secrets was timed with you hitting the keys. I'm clicking my pen. Ah, okay. It just sounded like you were typing. Uh, no, I've got nothing to write about. I'm just clicking the pen and pretending like, you know. That's okay. It's good for the accents. <laughs> Driving my point home. Um, um, yeah, I think then they also have like a, a lovey-dovey conversation about that they could adopt kids or he could turn another vampire yeah. so they could have like a semi-family. Yeah, basically, because they don't think they can have kids. Yeah. And you need to read the rest of these books. <laughs> I mean, it's also foreshadowed, like, really heavily, so. Really heavily. They have babies. Guys, they have babies. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I think we also have a hunting trip with Matthew, where she watches yeah. him hunt. And that it's so different from Isabu, who's eating for food rather than Matt. Enjoying killing. Who's... Yeah, well, it's more that he asks, he's waiting for the prey to basically admit defeat <laughs> so he he like chases them and waits for them to accept that they're going to die and then he'll eat them yeah which is just fucking weird yeah that's the thrill of the hunt right yeah yeah anyway well, they make think, love well not quite yeah Sorry. like everything but sort of everything but p and v we're having some strong canoodling. Matthew goes to sleep for the first time in, like, years. It's the first time he's had a nap in a long time. Because vampires do sleep, apparently. They just don't need it. Yeah, um, they, don't, every- they don't do it very often, basically. They, yeah, they're super energy efficient, so they don't need the recovery. But he's asleep because he's comfortable. I wish he's... Wifey, wifey. Um, so she's like, yeah, look at me. I'm so cool. I'm going to go for a walk by myself in the grounds. <laughs> Which is how every happen. horror story starts. Yeah. I mean, 
I don't know if I if I get kidnapped out of a French chateau, like my life is going pretty well before that point. <laughs> Maybe. I'll take kidnapping if it means I get to go into the chateau first. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. I'll I'll come and bust you out. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, she gets kidnapped. Yes, by another witch. We get tattoo. A, yeah, a new one. Which yeah, tattoo. I mean, fucking names. Um. Ah yes, she's Finnish, isn't she? I think so. She's gonna Something finish Nordic. the job. That's true. Ah. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we have her going, tell me all your secrets, and she's like, no, never, and then she starts torturing her. Yeah, um, and we get a lot of, like, Diana exists in two time periods at the same kind of place. She's seeing her mother, um, but her mother seems to be, like, basically a memory and she's going through all these things about Diana having to keep her secrets and keep all these things bound like she she's got to keep everything under wraps she can't let anybody know her secrets or her mom's secrets and realize that all the tales that her parents told her all her fairy tales or her bedtime stories were them trying to teach her and like impress upon her the knowledge that she needs to like situations like this her yeah. mother was a, a, a great seer, and she could see into the future. And so there's, like, her mother and her father tried to, like, give her the skills to survive this specific moment. Um, yeah. And and, then, and keep the family secrets intact. Um, I don't know whether that part of that comes in later, where she gets or where she... Um, remembers that bedtime story about her shadowed man? Yeah. Well, the the shadowed comes man comes after she gets into the oblet. Oh, but, okay. again, French words, guys, I'm really sorry. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basically just a French dungeon, isn't it? It's a forgetting hole. It's a giant hole they throw you down to forget about you. Yeah. So, um, French dungeon. Yeah, anyway, so she gets tortured, like, a lot and hung upside down, and they tried to shake everything loose in the literal sense. Um, And Satu's like, okay, I need more people. I'm tired of torturing you with magic for hours on end. Let me put you in this forgetting hole. I'll get you out later once I've got backup. Because it took us three, it took three people to cut your dad open. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. I'm trying to get his secrets out, but he was good at keeping his secrets too. But you can't keep secrets from the council. Congregation. Congregation? Council. Congregation. Congregation mm-hmm. is the correct word. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And I think um, it's then that, like, her parents, I don't know, is it like them coming as ghosts to her? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're Something. in there with all the other ghosts, and there's a ghost that's seeing ghosts, and they're talking about magic, and he's like, oh my god, I'm just gonna start praying, all this witchcraft talk, but he's like a ghost trapped in, <laughs> trapped in the oblet, like, dude. Yeah. Maybe you need to get some magic just to help you get out of that hole. Anyway. Yeah, and then they're kind of like, Diana, you've been our greatest secret, and you have to get out of there. Yeah, because she's got all these super magical powers that are not great. Yeah. Yeah, um, she's, she's incredibly powerful and done some incredibly powerful magic as a small child. And her her parents were trying to protect her from the council, and specifically Peter Knox, who wanted to use her for some kind of nefarious purpose as a, as a wee babe. But he didn't realize else. that it... Yeah. Uh, we find out that it, Peter Knox didn't realize that it's Diana that was doing the magic. He thought it yeah. was Diana. And that's why they get murdered in Africa because they're trying to find out what secrets um, the two of them were keeping, which is basically that Diana is super powerful. Yeah, pretty much. And they all, and at some point, because of all the magic or revealing magic, um, they do, what was it, spellbind her? They do spellbind her, yeah. Which, it sounds like it's technically used as a punishment for witches? Yeah, it's usually used as a punishment to stop to prevent witches from using their power. They can't access the magical part of themselves. Yeah. Which explains why her magic is fucking crazy as shit as it tries to get around the binding. 
She's incredibly powerful. Yeah. And it's just to get out. Um, um, then we have... Flash to Matthew's perspective. And yeah. he is going crazy. So, but they call in reinforcements, which yeah. is it's Matthew's brother. brother. Baldwin. Baldwin, indeed. Baldwin. And he comes with a helicopter, as you do. Well, you had to fly from whatever, like, cent- business centre he was at in Lyon. Yeah, because he's a, he's a banker, right? Or something like that. I don't yeah, know. He's, he, he's in business. Um, <laughs> as you have to be, if you want to be a mortal and make some money. Yeah, cash money. Um, and then they... Baldwin is an excellent tracker. Um, no, he's an excellent strategist, right? Where Matthew is, like, yeah. going crazy because he's like, they took her in the air! I can't smell her! <laughs> um, Baldwin's like, okay... So if they can fly, where are they headed? Like, what direction's the wind going? Where are the locations around here? Where, like, yeah. he's like, stop and think. Don't be an idiot. And every, and Matthew's going, like, crazy. And he's like, I promise, thinking is easier. Raging is, like, going to be worse. So based on a lot of thinking, because Matthew built all of the castles in the local area, like, Matthew, you did all of the castles around here. If they, where were they going to put a witch who can't fly? And he's like, oh, the forgetting place. Um, in there. They go off to the oblate. And she's there. Big surprise. But yeah. they can't get her out of the hole. It's 60 meters down and it's too far to jump. So the vampire could get in and throw her out, but then couldn't get themselves out, whoever they were. And they're running yeah, out of like time. Very, it's very plot convenient. It is. So Diana has to throw off the ribbon and fly. She's uh, still kind of delirious at this point. Yeah. And her mother says to her, oh, he's who we've been waiting for, the Shadow Man, which is where we get that. Thing. Yeah. Um, and he proceeds, so she proceeds to unbind herself to some extent. She has to imagine the ribbon in place. She undoes the ribbon, throws it up in the air, and then follows the ribbon. Yeah, it's very, very metaphor heavy, that scene. Um, yeah. She's kind of delirious. We've got a lot of ghosts going around because now she can see dead people. Um, and Matt's like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, sweep you up, stick you in this helicopter, and off we go. Anyway. Yeah. So, great rescue. There we are. Mm. I think and it's the, it's yeah, not the same. family. Sorry. And then everybody's like, we're not safe in France. Yeah, I mean, they... They try to take care of her wounds at the back at the chateau, and I think they actually like burned the the symbol of the Knights of Lazarus into her back. Yeah, they carved his sim- symbol into her back, which is just really Rude. odd. Rude. Like we'll, we'll brand you as his. Yeah, and I also, but it's not just his, right? They're saying that they know that he also owns the Knights of Lazarus. Yeah. So, more plot later to come. But the whole point of the Knights of Lazarus is that they... The intention of them is that they are help for the helpless. Yeah, it's um, the whole Robin Hood kind of scheme. Yeah, basically. And Matthew's the head of the order. Baldwin is second in command, third in command. Something anyway, like that. Baldwin is in charge of the family, but not in charge of... The Knights, yeah. The Knights. And his dad made him promise that Baldwin would never be in charge of the knights because Baldwin would use it as a military might and not as a help for the helpless. So I think that's when they're like, well, this all is going too well. Maybe we should go to your family now. Yeah, so they go to hide it amongst the witches. Yeah, so they're going to her aunts. Yeah, I think mm. they're somewhere in the state of New York. Not New York, Connecticut, isn't it? Uh, no, you're right, New York, New York State. Yeah, I can't remember the city, but... Uh, yeah, so they get there, and I do like that scene about the house. The house is great. <laughs> the house of her aunt is not just haunted by ghosts, but it's also a magical house. Yeah. 
And it's I do uh, like the scene of them arriving and him just going, your house is magical. And she's like, of course, we're witches. <laughs> like, of course, the house is magical and haunted. What did you think? Yeah. But the house loves him. The house loves everybody who comes forward. Yeah. It's it's a very, very personality-heavy house. It's great. I like the house. Yeah. Car- house is a good character. Almost as good as Tabitha. <laughs> It's, it's um, who's the cat, the family cat. Which, yeah, definitely. Also, like, the whole part of just the house, like, doing random shit. Like, oh, yeah, there was that room that disappeared for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but then it came back, it's fine. And I think they also then, at some point, find out that the the type of spells that her parents put on her is also so that nobody can force the magic out yeah. of her. Okay, so makes um, in the process of Diana's aunt's partner, M, healing her, and he, she and Sarah, which is her aunt, healing her, they yeah. go through what happened to her. And Sarah uh, and M are talking about the fact that she's been spellbind and what being spell- spellbind actually means. And so Matthew is discussing with them all the times he's seen Diana use magic. And they kind of figure out that the spellbinding can be overcome when Diana needs her magic, but not when she wants her magic. So if yeah. she is in want it's, of it, it does not work. Yeah, it's, but it's it helps. need driven. Yeah. So if she needs to fly, like fly away from something, she can fly. Yeah. And then at some stage, we have the house just popping out some some papers from her parents. Yeah, so she the, the house gives her a letter. Um, so I have the letter here. It begins with absence and desire. It begins with blood and fear. It begins with the discovery of witches. And then they give them one of the three missing pages from the ash mole. Yeah. So we, we forgot to mention earlier, the book from the library in the opening, is missing three or more pages that have been cut out of the book. Yes. And <coughs> um, there's also, I think, a letter from her uh, mother in there that kind of explains about her magic and about the shadow. Yeah, and, yeah, and that it wasn't her fault and that they couldn't think of a better way to help her than to give her panic attacks to stop her doing something stupid. <laughs> yeah, because that's how we solve everything. Yeah. Well, to stop her being too brave, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's the the general thing of we did this for your own good, but now we kind of have to undo it for everybody's best interest. Yeah. yeah. And for some reason, they also mentioned that she was like she was born with the amniotic sac unbroken. Yeah, she was still in the ambiotic sac when she was born, which means that, which, according to folklore, means she'll be a great seer. So the idea that she'll be able to see the future. Yeah, which, besides all the other fucking crazy magic she has, seems like not that noteworthy, but okay. I mean, at this yeah. point, we kind of expect her to be able to do all the fucking fancy magic. Yeah, and then we get a call from Matthew, uh, from Marcus and Miriam, who are flying to New York to give Diana more test results. Yeah, because you can't mail that shit or anything. No, I think it's more important than that. So when they, when we get Miriam and Marcus, and the house, sorry, the house puts in a room at this point, right? When they, dis- when Miriam and Marcus are coming. Yeah. Because no son of uh, no son of mine will be staying in a hotel. <laughs> I believe that's the quote. Um, and then she goes, "Don't tell Marcus that. That I don't know if he'll be ready for a stepmom." Matthew is so uh, Marcus is so ready for a stepmom. He immediately calls her mom. Um, it's adorable. <laughs> it is adorable. He's like twenty seven years old though, and a doctor in and of his own right. But that's fine. I mean, is he though? A, no, he's like 200 years old. Yeah, like, he, he's an old fucking man who, man who goes like, oh, stepmom. Yeah. Anyway, 
so they've tested the other samples that they took from Diana, her hair and her cheek swab, and find out she's actually that thing where she eat her, ate her twin in the womb. So she's two people. Yeah. So she's um, like magic times two, but just... Yeah, so she gets all the extra powers, including time walking. Yeah, foreshadowing. I think also... Yeah, I think it's also in one of the one of the the pages that that they find from the Ashmole. Yeah, so the page in the Ashmole is the is the chemical child. So the, yeah, and it has like his her father wrote onto the page, and that's how they're like, oh fuck, he could time walk. Father wrote in the opening page of Asimov that is currently in the library. The yeah. page that they have doesn't have any writing on it, and she's very adamant that nobody damages the page because <laughs> she's a loves books. Um, anyway, but the chemical child and its significance, plus Diana already being her and her twin, which you know Diana's twin is Apollo, which is the moon god. Mm. Is Diana that already the revealed in this book though? Yeah, 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 it is. Um, so, and then in the pictures, we get the <sighs> silver is often in alchemy depicted as being a lady of the moon and gold being a man of the sun. And we get an illustration here with rather than the man just being bright gold colors and the sun is also repic- depicted as being like the shadows in the sunlight as well. He's a lot darker. There's a lot of black going through it. And then we're like, oh, Shadow Man, it looks a lot like <laughs> the Matthew. Anyway, so Miriam's like, you're drinking tea that Martha gave you that has all these, like, contraceptive herbs in it. So she knows. And, <laughs> and you're two people. And... Biology. This Ashmore page is about having a baby. This could be the next step of evolution because vampires can't make new vampires and witches are dying out and you're this super witch and Matthew's this super old guy. Like, <laughs> this would be your opportunity. And he's the super old guy, but the swimmers are still super fit. Well, no, because the newer generations of vampires are struggling with ones to make babies. So. Yeah. I mean, Matthew, though... I don't know if he would be able to, to turn new ones, would he? Or does it only yeah, affect the new still, ones? He thinks he can still... It mostly affects the new ones, but he still thinks he could turn. He's just got no interest in creating any more family. <laughs> I got enough of that shit. Yeah, from the vampire line, basically. But then Matthew and Diana have a discussion. He'd be like, well, if you wanted a baby, we can have a baby. And she was like, if I was having anybody's baby, it would be yours. <laughs> um, yes. Well, and... anyway... I think it's also, I think she also goes like, you kind of expected this, didn't didn't you? Like, that's the reason why we haven't done it. And he's like, mm, maybe. No, no. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know if he really expect. like, part of him is expecting it, but part of him is, like, so into the denial hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we also get the, the info from her aunts then that um she did some time walking when she was a toddler yeah she's been time walking since she was three so we've got cool fact that she went back in time on her third birthday to get more cake (laughs) or a couple days after her third birthday to her third birthday to get more cake which Um, is what everybody would do honestly use time walking for cake obviously cake based time walking that's it um cool and then we get attacked by Juliet. Um, yes, we do, which is one of Matthew's ex that has been turned by the congregation into spy assassin. Gilbert, specifically. Yes. Who used to be that Pope Gilbert, the Terrible, or whatever his actual title is. <laughs> but, um, he used to keep a witch in thrall. Anyway, Juliet attacks Matthew and Diana, and he's, like, trying to get Matthew and Diana, like, make out and be like, what does she have that I don't? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's she's like very hella clinical petty. about it. Yeah, and then Juliet goes, "Well, fine, fine, Matthew. No one can have you." And rips out his heart or his neck yes. throat. I mean, she like mortally wounds him, basically. 
pretty sure she tears out his heart or something. Yeah. Doesn't she punch she... her hand through his chest? Maybe. Anyway, there, at there's, that point, some, there's some tearing happening. Yeah, lots of tearing. At that point, Diana's like, ah, bring down that fire and rain. <laughs> um, so, yeah, shoots Juliet with a fiery arrow. Juliet starts running away. Diana shoots fiery arrow too, gets her every, there's lots of fire. Diana, uh, Juliet is dead. But I think the important thing to consider in this scene is that Diana hesitates and Matthew actually dies because of Diana's hesitation to actually kill yeah. Juliet. She never killed anyone before and takes on this huge blame about like him dying. And then she offers herself to the goddess we're talking like Wiccan goddess at this point. Um, yeah, I I really wasn't a, a big fan of that whole scene. I have to say, um, the whole like the goddess appears and then she offers her anything that she wants if she saves Matthew and all that. Like I do get that point. I just I really didn't like that. All of the sudden we're now oh yeah, witches have gods apparently and they're real and I, here is one. I yeah no, I thought that was I, done poorly. I disagree because, like, a big part of wish law is that they do have their own set of goddesses. Um, but it's, it's not really established in the books. No, but it, 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 there's enough around in the mythos that I think you can use it. My only problem is that, like, we've gone from being, like, somebody's twisting the lines of fate to bring this all together to being like, nah, bitch, I'm right here, I'm twisting these lines. Yeah. That we went from, like, this abstract concept of, like, fate and, you know, evolution will out to being like, no, 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 I'm doing this on purpose. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. The whole introduction of the goddess was just, I didn't care for that part. But, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, the, she, she saves Matthew and... Yeah. Having traded her soul to the goddess so that Matthew doesn't die, she then feeds him her blood, and he basically tears out her neck, doesn't he? In the end? Yeah, he's, he's overdoing it a slight bit. Yeah, he goes, she gives him, offers him, she offers him her arm, and he drinks from her arm until he's strong enough to be like, <laughs> arm, give me some of that <laughs> neck. <laughs> yeah, so she almost drains her, which, as you do. And then... Marcus and Miriam are like, she comes back to consciousness with Marcus and Miriam trying to give her a blood transfusion and stitch her back up, right? Um, yeah. I don't know if there was much more said on the whole, on the whole issue of everybody almost dying, except that they are realizing that they aren't really safe anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Um, and I think. It's at that point that they decide that they want to go back into the past. They're going to go... Um, I don't think quite past. yet. I think before that, the the two demons are coming over, like Sophie and Nathaniel. No, uh, I think it's a little bit... It has to be before that, because Sophie gives her that piece and that, that sets what time they go back to. So they're like, we should go back into the past and find a decent witch who can teach her how to use your mm. magic. Yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah. basically, they want to hide in time from all the others, and we have the the demon married couple coming by because apparently Sophie, um, yeah, she has that Stop figure that she needs. Yeah, but I think that that chess figure for for Diana has been in her family for how long? Generations and generations. It's been forgotten how long. Yeah. But it's Matthews! Da, da, da. Surprise. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think he also remembers the exact night when he had that chess game and he lost the figure. Yeah. So yes, we end do. up Sophie and Nathaniel? Yeah. Arrive, they give Diana this thing and then they're like, now nah, we need you guys to keep doing your fated journey because uh, I'm actually... As a demon, I'm actually the daughter of a witch, and yeah. my baby's going to be a witch, and we're going to get a lot of being kidnapped and threatened because we're both, like, we're, we've are we got a lot of mixed blood here, and two demons shouldn't be able to give birth to a witch. Yeah, so the congregation will probably kill all of them if they found out, so mm. raising the stakes a bit. 
Yeah, and then the house delivers Diana more presents, which is a, a magical poppet, which is basically a voodoo doll in current... I think the current understanding of what it is, a poppet is a voodoo doll. Um, mm. And in it, we've got Isabu's earring. Yay! Joy! Yeah. So Matt, Matthew decides, okay, we know when we're going back. Uh, then the witches are all like, oh, you should go on... Halloween, it's when the two worlds are most connected, the spirit world and this world, and I'm sure time hopping will be easier because of that. Just yeah. take it as written. You can't, like, argue with this nonsense. <laughs> um, so they're going to go, and Matt, Matthew needs shit done. Um, he gets Hamish on board. So Hamish arrives, and now we have three demons, three vampires, and three witches making their own... Covenant. Yeah. And we have, I think Matthew does all the, like, um, I think he names um, Marcus as his, like, heir sort of thing. Yeah, yeah so Marcus is going to inherit the knights. Nathaniel's now a knight. Hamish yeah. was a knight, but supposedly was not going to get called up to do anything. And he's like, what are you doing, man? Mate, mate. <laughs> God, I gotta work now. Mm. So he also gives Hamish power of attorney over Matthew and Diana's estates. I really like the part where Matthew gives gives Diana um, um, just immunizations for all the fucking diseases yeah. that were back around. Yeah. Lots of plague stuff. <laughs> yeah. She's getting all the shots. And we have Diana practicing her time walking because she has to carry Matthew and has to go fairly far back. So she has to practice yeah, that. Yeah, so shit. we get a lot of practice moments between Diana and Matthew where they go back in time and have a date and, and then leave again. <laughs> practice montage. Practice montage. Practice cute date montage. Yes. And I think then it's already Halloween time. Yeah. So they, they only had a week to do all these things and we finally come around to the day. Matthew gets a package from his mother, which contains the original play by Christopher Malau, which is Dr. Yeah. Christopher Malau, yeah. The Dr. Faustus. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. I feel like I probably should. Have you read it? I don't think I've read it, but I'm pretty sure I saw the, like, the recorded play on television when I was little. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what it's about. It's probably important, and you'd get a lot more out of this story if you knew, like, more of the references. But I don't, so... I think it's good enough that we that we get that tidbit, not to mention that he actually finally tells... She finally... Uh, he finally tells her when they're actually... What time they're actually going to, because she still had no idea that they're going to 1590. Yeah! Which, like, is a thing to know. I just kicked the table. Oh, my God, it hurts so much. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a raptor crying, but that's okay. We then have... Um, oh, yeah, we, we get... Have... <laughs> wedding ring? Are you talking wedding ring? No, actually, I wasn't, but... Okay, in the package of stuff that Matthew gets from his mum is the play. Is also clothes that he wore at the time, and also a shift that he that Martha made for Diana to wear so that she doesn't rock up nude. Because <laughs> if they showed up in modern clothes, they're kind of screwed. Yeah, which is burn them. Yeah, basically. Yeah, anyway, so the ring, and then Matthew's like, here's a very pretty ring for you, my wife. Yeah, then they get changed, get prepped, they have a cutesy little handing out um, sweets to the We get to, to see Matthew as, Matthew as a father to small children. He's great with kids. Yes, because he can give trick-or-treaters sweets without killing them. Oh, he's yeah. such a model father. Oh, no, and he has that cute moment with the butterfly and the witch. Yeah. Or the fairy and the witch. Yeah. And then he runs away from all the teenagers. He doesn't like the teenagers. 
<laughs> well, you're gonna have a lot of fun with your own then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they pretty much just go and step into time. Yeah. So they close up the house, right? Yeah. Because everybody is leaving. Um, everybody leaves the bishop house. Well, assemble an army of Lazarus yeah. and just get ready for the oncoming war, basically. Yeah. Um, and then Sarah comes back. She gets a note from the house that the house has been hiding, that Diana and Matthew made it. And then she puts the note in the fire and then burns it. Yeah, and I think the, the last the last scene we have is like one of the many ghosts that are haunting the house just going, mm, remember the past and await the future. Um, Hang on, I have that. That dramatic quote. All right, here we go. So... Bridget Bishop and Diana's grandmother watched the vehicle's departure. What will we do now, Diana's grandmother asked. What we've always done, Joanna, Bridget replied. Remember the past and await the future. Yeah, but she was like a super swell time to be a ghost and just sitting around and watching people having to deal with that shit. I mean, you could be a ghost or you could be Martha. You just got to sit there, sit back and enjoy the show that's unfolding in front of you. Two introverts falling in love. But we also get that right before that. That's that scene where the pilgrim locket. So yeah, Matthew has been wearing this pilgrim locket from his entire, for most of his life, since he murdered his first girlfriend, effectively, which is the pilgrimage of Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. Anyway, that falls into the fire, you know, because the house is like, mm, bitch, don't need this no more. Um, into the magical fire that's been conjured over the note. And out of the thing comes blood and mercury. Dun, dun, dun. So we get more of this chemical analogies from. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish I knew a little bit more of alchemy. Because I feel like she's clearly she's put a lot of research into alchemy for this book. And there are so many more secrets that I'd unlock if I knew more. If I was yeah. better read. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if you can write a fantasy drama romance book series and go super deep into alchemical knowledge. Like, either you have to dumb it down first a little bit or just give more reference and knowledge. Like, either way, you cannot expect us all to know about alchemy. No, I agree. And I think she's done a really good job in the story as it is. But I feel like if I knew more... There would be more for me to know, if that makes yeah. sense. She, she like could have explained I... a couple of things as a side note, just to give the reader a bit more information. Well, what do you think you missed? Because, like, I only did high school chemistry, so. I mean, same thing here. I, I don't know that much about alchemy and definitely nothing, like, actually historically relevant. So there will probably be a lot of little inside jokes in there that... You only get if you do three hours of back reading. Yeah, and probably. That's kind of what I'm feeling. But I feel like she did, aside from that, I have a, I did chemistry up until the final year of school, but that's still ten years ago now. Oh, actually, like, I only did chemistry until year ten. Oh, okay. And our chemistry was not good chemistry, so... Yeah. But, I mean... I don't think I was really lost at any part in the book, so it's fine. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. And I think she's done a really good job with that. So, like, in general, it's a well-written book. None of the characters make stupid decisions. I love that we've got smart people making smart decisions. Like, and I don't even mean that necessarily, like, they make decisions that, they just make decisions that I kind of, like, agree that their characters would make. Like, just not to compare it with Across the Universe again, <laughs> but just having that been the last book that we'd read before this, I like, I uh, struggle with that book so much because the characters in that story don't make believable choices. Like, the characters are dumb and they don't make decisions that 
are smart for their character. They make dumb decisions with dumber characters, and it just it annoys me. Whereas these characters make believable decisions, and the plot goes in that correct direction. Sure, they got rose tinted glasses on, and way more bang for your buck as far as powers go. But like, smart characters making smart decisions. I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm and I'm never reading across the universe again. I've now read it twice. And if, it, if I never read it again, I'm very happy. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see if any of the patrons decides to really fuck with you. <laughs> because that would be four rude. books, <laughs> as we know. There are four books in that series. Four. <laughs> oh, the fun. I mean, not to mention that there are enough of other terrible fucking books out there. Oh, yeah. Like, there this this isn't the height we could reach. Yeah. And look, I, I don't mind reviewing more teenage literature. I just... Anybody on Patreon makes us read that stupid fan fiction, Harry Potter fan <laughs> fiction. I'm, I'm saying it now. We're not doing it. I've heard half of it. I'm not interested. No. <laughs> People who know what's going on will know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was A Discovery of Riches. Which Um, we really enjoyed, despite everything else. We did. All the sidetracks. Love this book. I'm going to be reading all of the rest of the series. Just for completionist's sake. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and listening to this week's episode. Do follow us on Instagram under T Red Lightly and Facebook and all the other social medias. And catch the next episode on YouTube or SoundCloud or all your other streaming services. Yeah, wherever um, you're currently reading it. Yeah. Listening to it. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. When we're covering Vampire Academy. Ooh, that'll be some interesting stuff. Oh yeah, more teenage vampire romance. Because that's apparently the shit we're on at the moment. (laughs) Yeah, we don't have a type at all. (laughs) Dumb. Alright, let's end this shit.